The structure of the DNA molecule was discovered by two scientists, James Watson and Francis Crick, in 1955. Their discovery demonstrated that life was much more complex than anyone had previously envisioned. Himself a confirmed evolutionist, Francis Crick, who received a Nobel Prize for this discovery, came to confess that a structure like DNA could never have emerged by chance. Think of a cell as being a nanofactory, a factory where, on a very small scale, digital instructions are being used to make the components of the factory. Here we have the famous DNA double helix. You can see the two helical strands that are intertwined and wind around each other on the outside of the molecule. This is the material that stores all of our genetic information. In higher life forms, this will be the equivalent of something like a gigabyte of information stored in the molecules that form the individual chromosomes, all packed within the nucleus, which is a tiny fraction of the entire cell size. So what does DNA do? Well, the information in DNA ends up providing the information for sequencing the amino acids to make protein. We have information in a one-dimensional form that provides the information for a three-dimensional form. If we attempt to write down the information in the DNA, this would take up approximately a million pages. This is equal to an encyclopedia 40 times bigger than the Encyclopedia Britannica, which is one of mankind's greatest single accumulations of information. But this incredible information is stored in the tiny nucleus of our cells, measuring about a thousandth of a millimeter in size. It is calculated that a DNA chain small enough to fill a teaspoon has the capacity to store all the information contained in all the books ever written. Of course, such an amazing structure could never have been The theory of evolution, which sees life as the result of mere coincidences and haphazard happenings, is helpless to explain anything in the face of the incredible complexity of DNA. The information that is stored in, in the DNA molecule is pointing back to, an, to a designing intelligence. Now, why do I say that? Um, it has to do with what we know about the cause and effect structure of the world. Uh, our, our local hero in Seattle, uh, Bill Gates, says the DNA is like a software program, only much more complex than any we've ever created. And that's a very suggestive remark because we know that programs always come from programmers. And in fact, we know generally that information, whether it's in a computer program or a hieroglyphic inscription or in a headline in a newspaper or uh, a block of text in a book, information always comes from an intelligent source. So yes. when we find information in the DNA molecule, the most logical thing to conclude is that it too had an intelligent source. Now, Dr. Werner Gitt is an information specialist. Since we're talking about information, mm -hmm. We'll go to an information specialist. Okay. He wrote a book called In the Beginning Was Information that you and I both, uh, both love. Mm -hmm. um, and in his book he says this, A code system is always the result of a mental process. It requires an intelligent origin or inventor. Mm -hmm. It should be emphasized that matter as such is unable to, to generate any code. All experiences indicate that a thinking being voluntarily exercising his own free will, cognition, and creativity is required. He goes on to say, there is no known law of nature, no known process, and no known sequence of events which can cause information to originate by itself in matter. Right. And do you realize what a serious problem that is for the evolutionist? It's a tremendously serious problem. Here's an yes. information specialist yeah. saying that information never comes from naturalistic processes. It right. always requires intelligence. A living cell is comprised of thousands of tiny parts that work in harmony. To make a comparison, within the cell, there are power stations, high-tech factories, a complex data bank, huge storage systems, advanced refineries, and a seemingly conscious cell membrane that controls what enters and leaves the cell. In order for the cell to survive, all of these organelles have to exist at the same time.
Irreducible complexity was coined by Mike Behe in describing these molecular machines. Basically what it says is that you have multi-component parts to any given organelle or system in a cell, all of which are necessary for function. That is, if you remove one part, you lose function of that system. Without the tools to observe the machinery of the cell, and long before the idea of irreducible complexity, Charles Darwin offered a way to test his own theory. In Origin of Species, he wrote, If it could be demonstrated that any complex organ existed, which could not possibly have been formed by numerous, successive, slight modifications, my theory would absolutely break down. Darwin acknowledged that if someone identified a biological system that could not have been constructed in incremental steps over long periods of time, then his theory would be invalid. And what Michael Behe and others have discovered is the existence of biological machinery that cannot be explained away by Darwinian processes. Darwin's failed predictions have in fact falsified his own theory. Falsified, falsified his own theory.